Uh, so this morning I want to talk a little bit about new wine, fresh oil. And uh, I'm going to sh I want to share about new wine is the new revelation God has given us. The fresh oil is the anointing that he's given us to go with the revelation. When you have a revelation, you need the anointing to bring the revelation forward, right? Yeah. And there is a season right now of an outpouring of revelation. I have had so many dreams this week. I can hard, I write them down, write them down, write them down. There's so much revelation being poured out. Uh, just like Tina was sharing, f first vision she's had of, of just angelic wings covering the place. I mean, God is, is looking for people who want the revelation, and he's anointing us to release what the revelation is carrying, right? Uh, and over the last couple of months, really, we've talked about these signs of God, and I'm just going to go over them real quick because I want to remind us we have to remember what we, he is doing so we can recognize when it's happening to us or when that opportunity is being provided to us. So uh, one of the things I talked about at the very end of last year is can we prosper in a time of oppression? And we have seen prosperity come our way, breakthroughs and financials, and you can go back and watch the services because there will be testimonies of raises when there shouldn't have been raises, ridiculous raises, not just 50 cents an hour, ridiculous raises, bonuses being given out just because you have the favor of God over you. Uh, debts being paid off. We've heard multiple testimonies of debts being paid off. Um, so we need to remember that whether there's an economic issue or not, God is not challenged by the economy of the United States, right. nor the economy of the world. Right. God says, I am the abundant giver. I give the abundant blessings. I pour out those over my people. So we need to understand that the indexes, the standard and poor, all those are great things, but they're not God things. God is our bank. He is our provider. So just, just, we just have to remember that's a sign when there's economic pressure and God is pouring out provision that's a sign that regardless of the economics around us, regardless of whether there's chicken or furnace pieces or whatever, God is going to take care of what we need, right? He's going to provide housing for us. We've been praying for housing breakthroughs for those who are looking for housing. So that's one. We're prospering in the time of oppression. Number two, there are new assignments that are going with the new anointings, with the new revelation, and some of the assignments are temporary and some of them are permanent. Some of you will be moved into new positions completely and some of it will be for a moment. Going with that is there is a warrior anointing that has been released. That Jehu anointing that goes from serving to reigning from watching the evil and the demonic kings come against the people of God to destroying them with the anointing of God in his hand and raising up people who were afraid but are no longer afraid because the anointing is so strong. So, so we have to, uh, so prospering, new assignments, warrior anointing, and signs, wonders, and miracles being released in this hour. And uh, he gives us so many of those that it just, uh, it just amazes me. If, we, if you read the headlines, you would say there is no God. If you read uh, what God is doing and, and see the breakthroughs that we've had, you're like, no one could have done that but God. Right. It is pointing people to a God that won't even acknowledge that he's existing, exist, but because of what he's doing, it begins to make them scratch their head. It begins to make them ponder. It begins to make them wonder, how is that possible? How is that possible? Uh, number four, revelatory solutions. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago. God has given us the answer to whatever the problem is. And as we were praying this morning, one of the things that God was showing me was um, 
We don't really seek out revelation until we're pressed with a problem, until it becomes the need for it to be our finest hour to take care of what is happening. And we have the choice to look at the problem and hide or look at the problem and say, God, you are the answer to every problem I have. I have determined in my heart that you will be the one that I will seek, not anyone else, that your word will be what I consume, that my mind will be renewed because the word is in me. I eat and consume the word every day. And I align myself with like-minded people who can declare with me, who can pray for me, who can uh, step into the position they need to step in in order to have the breakthrough for us. You know, sometimes it takes one person stepping in that breaks through all of us. It just takes that one person, and as they get their breakthrough in finances, in promotions, in businesses, in government, whatever it is, then we all get to go in behind it because they broke through. And uh, the last one, there's a bunch more, but we're just going to do these for now. Number five is the way he's manifesting right now. And it's been mentioned earlier, he's manifesting in fire. He's manifesting in joy. And, And the joy is not just, and I said this last week, it's not just rolling on the ground joy. It's a joy that's cleansing us from heartache, cleansing us from pain. It's a joy that is taking us and internally rewriting how we feel. Because we know that when, when things happen, uh, there was someone here a couple of weeks ago that I was ministering to, uh, that they had been through several years of just tra- trauma over and over and over. And what had happened is that trauma became a part of who they were. So little triggers would happen and that trauma would, re- you know, would start back up. And uh, we just prayed for a cleansing. That's the kind of joy God is doing. He's cleansing us from trauma, from disappointment. He's cleansing us and replacing all of that with his joy. So we find ourselves in a moment of, um, I talked to someone last week and, uh, on a, um, and their husband said, well, I just want you to know I'm leaving. I'm turning the keys into the uh, company and uh, I'm leaving. And she had texted me, and I called her the, the next morning because she texted me late. I think it was 8.30 or something, you know, right? <laughs> Come on, somebody get that. <laughs> that is late for me. So uh, anyhow, I called her the next morning. I'm like, are you okay? She is laughing, and, and she is just bubbling over. She goes, I don't know why. I just know God's going to work everything out. I just feel this joy inside of me. And, you know, that is not a normal response to what is happening to her. It is a God supernatural response so that she is able to see what he has for her in this situation in order to have breakthrough and move forward and not be paralyzed by the trauma. So, so God is just, he is doing these things that is really, it, it is rewiring our mind to look for him as opposed to the circumstance. So, um, so today, like I said, I'm, I want to talk about the new wine and the fresh anointing, the fresh oil. Um, and those are just the preliminaries. I mean, go back and listen to the services and, and you'll see the testimonies that have been given. Um, and I'm going to share a vision that the Lord gave me, but I'm going to share it at the end because we're going to activate that vision over each one of us. So let's start with Joel. Uh, we're going to go to Joel 2, 18 through 24. Uh, Joel 18, uh, 2, 18, it says, Then the Lord will be zealous for his land and pity his people. The Lord will answer and say to his people, Behold, I will send you grain, new wine, and oil. And you will be satisfied by them. 
I will no longer make you a reproach among the nations, but I will remove far from you the north army. I will drive him away into the barren and desolate land. With his face toward the eastern sea and his back toward the western sea, his stench will come up and his foul odor will arise because he has done this monstrous thing. You know, it's interesting that Emily said, shared a word earlier while we were in our prayer, and she was talking about being, um, uh, what was the phrase that she used? Do you remember? But she was talking about being dissatisfied, having a bad attitude. And she was talking about how worship changes that attitude and she even mentioned, when she said it, I thought, oh, I think that's in the scripture I'm reading today, how a bad attitude brings a foul smell, a foul odor. Right. And as you worship, it, it overcomes the bad attitude that you have. And it releases the sense of praise and it changes the way you see it. And everything you see, you see from the, from the garment of praise not that heaviness of attitude. And I thought, that is a good word. Yeah. Whew, she should, I should have had her share that this morning. But just think about that. We can shift how we feel, how we think, as soon as we begin praising. As soon as we begin seeing the Lord and what he's doing. And, you know, we only need a revelation when we're in trouble. When we think about it, we, when, we, when our days go great, it's not like we're knocking on God's door saying, I'm going to need a revelation for this. I'm going to need a revelation for that. We're going along going, this is a great day, God. Thank you. But when, thing, when we get pressed, we need that new wine. We need that revelation to be poured into us so that we're able to move forward in where we are. And with that revelation, he always gives an anointing. He always gives that anointing of breakthrough. Um, I was thinking about new wine and, you know, new wine that hasn't sat for years and years and years and, and developed this, this deeper aged taste. It's brand new. It's a Beaujolais. It's, it's, it's right. It's the new out of the, the uh, vintage. And so it doesn't have a revelation sometime, doesn't have the fullness or the maturity and we get that from being with other people and sharing revelation because what happens is he puts those pieces together for us. It's just like all that list of things that I shared earlier, the five things I shared earlier. All of those were pieces that when we first shared them, we're like, okay, God, how is this working? But as we share them, we begin to see the manifestation of them because our eyes are open to the sign of God and what he's doing. So once you hear somebody say, you know, God is doing this, he's breaking through in finances, then all of a sudden you have the anointing to get breakthrough in your finances because that revelation has been released and the anointing has been released to go with it. So when there's revelation, there's an anointing that comes with it. So we, we don't just get a revelation and go, oh, yeah, that's awesome. Interesting. We get a revelation and we dig at it and we declare it and we say, God, this is the revelation you've given me. So I am not letting go until I get the manifestation of that revelation or until I share it with others and we can pray in it together. You know, God has the anointing, the power to go with what he's given us, right? So uh, I'm sure I was reading somewhere. Oh, uh, let's see. Emily, you missed it. I just shared your word. It was such a good word, too. We're going to get you to preach one day. I'm telling you. It says, fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord has done marvelous things. Yeah. Say, the Lord, the Lord has done marvelous things. For me. For me. And he has. And the more we declare that and stand on that, the more we're able to see the marvelous things because that's what we're looking for. Yeah. Right? Do not be afraid, you beast of the fields, for the open pastures are springing up and the trees bear its fruit. The fig trees and the vine yield their strength. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. That is part of our power, is rejoicing in the Lord. 
for he has given you the former rain faithfully, and he will cause the rain to come down for you, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. I want to stop on that latter rain for a minute because the, the, form, the early rains are in the fall. The latter rains are in the spring. And uh, I actually looked up when spring begins because I thought that is a word for us right now. We're, we're, uh, you just said the abundance of rain. I mean, we're in the raining down of God. Uh, spring technically starts March 20th. I think it's March 20th to June 21st. But we need to prepare for the latter rain. And you know the spring rains are much harder than the fall rains. I spe- it's, especially here in Florida, we get the drenching, the pouring downs, the, you know, um, the 4 to 7 o'clock you know, where we can't hardly drive. But we need to understand that the spring that is coming is going to be a game changer for us. It's not going to be a normal spring. And we're in the preparation of that time because we are learning to see what God is doing so that we can encounter and engage and release and declare and do whatever God is calling us to do in this spring season. We're going to see a major shift in that spring season. And it's close. And one of the things the Lord's been talking to me about is us doing a corporate fast. So uh, I'm looking for us to probably do a corporate fast starting the 1st of March, but I'll keep us uh, apprised. And you guys be praying about it because you can't do a corporate fast if the corporate's not willing to fast with you. (laughs) Me, myself, and I, but how about you guys too? But I feel like it's important in this time. I know a lot of you fasted the first of the year, but I just feel like sometimes there is a... A, um, I don't know if it's a wrestling or whatever it is that, that happens in a season with God when we're fasting and going after this uh, abundant rain, this outpouring that he has for us. And it's not just for us individually. We, we are breaking the stronghold of the enemy in this season on us coming against us, coming against our nation. So it's certainly not just for an individual, but you know that as we get hungry and go deep and fast for what God has, it opens us up to the other things that are possible in the breakthrough that we get, yeah. right? Yeah. So, uh, so be praying into that because I'd really like for us to get started in this. Um, So verse 24, the threshing floor shall be full of wheat and the vat shall overflow with new wine and oil. This is a new wine, a fresh oil season. And each one of us have it. You got it. You don't have to worry about it. You got it. It's just us learning how to move in this flow of wine and oil, right? Right. Uh, So I will restore to you the years that the swarming locusts have eaten, the crawling locusts, the consuming locusts, the chewing locusts, the army which I sent amongst you. So these locusts, not only do they eat, but they crawl and they consume and they chew and they just take everything. But God is restoring all of that for us. And we are seeing the restoration. I've got to to know that... um, Actually, I know all of, most of you, so I know that God is doing that. Um, but really, it's just we've only seen a small breath of what he's doing. And we're about to see a great gale force wind. I was sharing, you know, I'm going to go for a run yesterday, and they'll say, a, a gale force wind is near you. I'm like... Okay, the great gale force wind of God blowing through what he's going to do for us. Verse 26, it says, You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be put to shame. Then you will know that I am in the midst of Israel. I am the Lord your God and there is no other. And people shall never... My people shall never be put to shame. Shame, you have been kicked out the door. You are out. You are out. The wondrous, glorious provision of God, right? 
So I want to talk about this in reality of how we do this. You know, when, sometimes when we read the Bible, we look at it and say, that was a great thing that happened back then. But what we need to understand is we are supernatural people in a physical body, right? Amen. Greater in us is the spiritual realm than in the physical realm. But because we live in the physical realm, we get confused that that is greater than the spiritual realm. But that is not true. We have to understand that the spiritual realm is much more our heart, our home, our thought. We've just been trained to do the other. It's like... When you work out, the first time you work out, you're like, I think I'm going to die. <laughs> the second time, I think I'm going to die. The fifth time, I may not die, but I'm close. I mean, the more you work out, the more you're like, I've got to work out. I cannot stand it. I just love it. It builds me. It strengthens me. It's, it's all those different things. That's the spiritual realm. The first time, it's like, I don't know if I can do this, God. We'll see how it all works. I'm not sure you're going to show up. But the more we do it, the more he does it. And I just want to switch over to 2 Kings for a minute. We're going to go to ver, uh, chapter 2 because I want us to remember, and I have to remind myself all the time of this, is that what we read in the scripture is God's way of showing us that is a natural capacity for us. What they did, we do. Jesus says what he did, we can do greater. So our natural capacity is to move in the spiritual realm, releasing whatever God has for whatever the situation is and our body and our mind follow what the Spirit's doing. And I talked about that a little bit last week. So let's go to 2 Kings 2.19. And Elisha has been anointed with... Elijah's mantle. Elijah's been taken up to heaven. He's picked up his mantle. He activated the mantle. And then he started moving in a realm that he had not moved before because he was serving Elijah the whole time. So he becomes, with this fresh anointing, he becomes the one who lives out of the Spirit of God and what he wants to do. And then, you know, we could read the whole section of Elisha, but there's just a couple of things I want to point out. Um, verse 19, it says, Then the men of the city said to Elisha, Please notice the situation of our city is pleasant. And as my Lord sees, but the water is bad and the ground is barren. There's the problem. Look at our city. Look where you live. What is the problem? Just think about it as we read on. And he said, bring me a new bowl and put salt in it. Now, that's a solution I would have come up with, right? <laughs> I mean, think about it. Sometimes when we read that, it is so bizarre. It is so out of our realm because our mind says, why? But our God says, do it. God presents us with solutions that sometimes are so out of our box that we say, that's just me. There's no way. And God's like, please <laughs> recognize it's me talking to you. We can talk ourselves out of a solution in a matter of moments. So they brought it to him. Then he went out to the source of the water, cast in the salt there, and said, thus says the Lord, I have healed this water from it, and there shall be no more death or barrenness. Done. Wow. Done. I got some salt in a bowl. Where's the source? Done. God says. Get your bowl out. Get your salt out. God has a solution for us. So the water remains healed to this day, according to the word of Elisha, which he spoke. It doesn't say according to the word of the Lord, which Elisha spoke. 
It is interesting. Because God has given us the mind of Christ. He has given us, it says, the upright right walk in righteousness. He has given us, and we went over this last week, 1 Corinthians 2, the Spirit searches the deep thing of God and reveals it to us who carry the Spirit. Elisha didn't say, wow, I'm so, bad, I'm so sad your water's bad. He said, just give it here, I'll take care of it. Because the God who I serve has a solution for what your problem is. And the water was healed from that day forward. We're going to look at a couple others because I want to imprint in us that whatever our problem is, God has the solution for, even though it's the strangest thing we could ever think of. It's the strangest thing. But he has it for us. He hasn't hidden it from us. He's hidden it for us. And we just have to ask him, and he will give it to us. Uh, 2 Kings 4, 38. And Elisha returned to Gilgal, and there was a famine in the land. Now the sons of the prophets, now these are the sons of the prophets, right? Were sitting before him and said to his servant, put a large pot and boil stew for the sons of the prophet. So one went out into the field and gathered herbs and found a wild vine and gathered it from a lap full, a lap full of gourds and came and sliced them into the pot of stew. They did not know what they were. Then they served it to the men to eat. Now it happened, as they were eating stew, they cried out and said, Man of God, there is death in the pot. And they could not eat it. So he said, bring me some flour. I know. Right? right? Anyone who cooks knows that when a recipe goes south, it's hard to get it real back in. I remember one time I uh, grilled, um, well, when Chuck and I first got married, I made him salmon patties. Because that's what we ate growing up. He's like, what is this? I opened up the can of salmon and I mashed it up with eggs and, you know, cracker crumbs and all that kind of stuff. And I cooked it for him. He's like, oh, he said, that was good, but maybe we shouldn't have that again. <laughs> <laughs> so whenever he doesn't like that, he's like, oh, yeah. Yeah, but I don't know if we should have that again. <laughs> he didn't spit it out. <laughs> he ate it. <laughs> so like I said, sometimes there's just no recovery from that. So there's death in the pot. Then bring some flour. And he put it in the pot and said, serve it to the people that they may eat. And there was nothing harmful in the pot. You know, God has a way of undoing that we don't understand. And part of this whole series, really for the last six, eight months I've been talking about is learning to tap into what God has instead of filtering it through what I have and hope he agrees with it. Because my ways are not his ways. It's clear. Those salmon patties... I'm sure if he would have made him, Chuck would have loved him. But, you know, my ways are not his ways. And if I can learn to position myself in a way where the first thought I have is God's thought. And that sounds wild. How can I have God's thought? I don't know. His word says we can have it. His word actually says right. that we can have it. Right. His word actually says that he lives in us. So when I need something, it's already housed. Right. We already have it. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's just a training process. It's like going to the gym. It's a training. It's like playing tennis. I watched Diana and her daughter push uh, like football I don't, what are they called? Sleds. Sleds. And, and, and do burpees. And I was like, 
Yay, as I watched it on Facebook. They are so good. I ain't doing that. <laughs> but you know what? That's what it is. It's a training. It's a training in whatever we do. We do it according to what the Lord has shown us. And some things he has answers in here for, and some things he has answers, but it's not the detail of what we need. So we have to take your word says to ask, and you'll tell me. You, your word says to go into the secret place with the Father and say, Father, who art in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's what your word says. So I'm in my secret place for, with you, listening to what your heart is for me and my situation and my solution and for, you know, whatever we're faced with. And that is my revelation that will come with an anointing that will release a breakthrough for my family, for my community, for my city, for my government. Yeah. I was, uh, you know, I told you guys I'm doing that solutionaries intensive and it is intense. Like I said, it didn't get over till 1030 the other night. And I was like, are we done yet? <laughs> but if I take notes, then I can stay connected. Otherwise, my brain goes somewhere else. Well, they told a couple of stories, and this is the kind of thing, and I've heard some of them before, but this is the kind of thing that's like, God. They talked about um, recently, it was in the, um, toward the end of last year, October, November, there was a medical, female medical doctor that was in Afghanistan, five months pregnant, and she was hiding in a town because they were going to kill her, first of all, because she was a woman, and second of all, because she was a foreigner. And this team of people, it's called, uh, I think it's called Finders. Uh, uh, Dan McCollum runs it out of Texas. And I've met him. He's told us all about some of these things before. They began to pray. And they had a team of people. And they asked, what is the physical strategy, step by step, turn by turn, to get her out of there? They gave them, you go, and I'm just going to wing it because I, I didn't write it down, but you go 200 meters and you turn right by the red sign. Then you go up so many miles and you turn. And they gave her literal like Siri would give us on our phones. And they told her when she got to the border that there would be someone that would let her through. So they did it. They went the path. They got to the border, and the guard, God just did something, thought he knew her, and took her across the border. She got back home, had her baby in December. That, that, you know, the things that I'm just like, that's what we want, God. That's what we want. We want the spirit. So we want to get together and we want to pray about these things. I mean, we want to get together. He started by going to a Walmart and there were 10 kids, pictures up on the billboard. And I think I told you guys this. They took them all home. They got their little team together, started praying over them. They found one of them. And then the sheriff came to him and said, I've got two more. They found both of them within hours of them starting to pray. They gave them license plate, the color of the car, where they were. That is the God that we serve. Yeah. That is the God that we serve. That's the revelation that came with the anointing in order to bring the breakthrough yeah. so that people could be rescued, people could be saved. Yeah. And there's healing testimonies. We have healing testimonies. I was like, God, I want that. And he said, start remembering. And I started listing all these different things. And I'm like, God, why don't I remember I'm already doing this? I might not have, we might not have rescued someone from Afghanistan, but God, just keep my mind fresh, right? But just think about this. This is, this is what we're in. We need a governmental solution. Whatever it is. We just go before God. We begin to pray. We begin to declare. We say, God, we want something specific. They were actually, this group uh, that's putting this on, was actually invited into Google to do a brainstorming thing with Google. And as they were invited in, they were blowing the minds of some of the greatest 
tech people with the revelation that God was releasing. That's who we are. That's who we are. We are the people that change the world by the revelation and the anointing and the action that goes with it. That is who we are. That is who I am. That is who you are, yes. And I want, I want to, you know, I want people to run to us and say, are you guys the one who came up with that? And just like Daniel said, it wasn't us, but our God gave us the solution for your problem so that you would be able to walk out in victory. That's who we are. And this is the this is a theme that we will continue to press into and press into and press into because you know, our city water just needs a little salt. Yes. Our government just needs a little flour. Amen. Right? Yes. Our families just need a little hope. They need to encounter the presence of the living God that we carry. Amen. Okay, I'm going to share a vision with you because we're going to uh, kind of activate this at the end because um, I'm so excited. <laughs> I, woke up this, uh, I woke up a couple mornings ago and I felt like the Lord's like, I'm going to show you something. I'm like, okay, run to my chair, my favorite chair that I sit in. And I go out and um, I'm sitting there and... He is above me. And this is a vision in my, in my heart. You know, I can, I can see it like a movie, but it's not with my tangible eyes, my natural eyes. So I, I, I'm sitting there, and he is above me, like way up there. Not above my ceiling, but, you know, like in the sky somewhere. I don't know. And he says, come up. So when he says, come up, you just go up. It's not like how. It just happens, right? So I just go up. And there's kind of, we're standing there and we're standing to the side and we're facing and there's like a road with trees and all these different things and it has a clear distinction, demarcation between us and the road. And it's like radiant and it's glorious and it's, you know, it's, it's glowing. It's, it's like something I've never seen before. So I asked the Lord, what is this? And he said, it's a highway to holiness. And uh, this word is for us, and everyone watching, everyone who hears, this word is for us. And uh, so, if, so I, I said, I know that that's in the word, um, and I couldn't quite remember, so of course I Googled. Uh, and understand, a lot of times when I have vision, it's, he just doesn't talk. It's an interaction with him. So uh, Isaiah 35, 8 says, the highway shall be there and a road, and it shall be called the highway of holiness. Isaiah 35, 8. And he said to me, and this is important for us, this is a highway that once you start down, you cannot go back. Now that doesn't, well, I won't go there. Once you step onto the pavement, it will activate a new journey for you. The old will be, you will need to leave the old behind to make room for the new, but don't worry about what the old is. I will show you. Because what is the first thing you think? You got to get rid of some of the old. What's the old? He's, don't worry about it. Don't try to figure it out. I'll show you. I looked at him and I said, can I step on the path? And he said, this is a step of surrender. This will be different. It will push you. It will be transformational. It will change you. Your mind will be open to a whole new understanding, and you will tap into a greater realm in the spirit. It will shift your focus. So we're standing there, and like I said, it's beautiful. It's, it's glorious, all these wonderful things. He said, this is the answer that you've been praying for. You will not understand at times, nor will you plan the way you used to plan. And I told him, I said, this reminds me of a story of uh, R.A. Torrey. And R.A. Torrey Jr., who used to live in Korea, he was the son of R.A. Torrey. Um, he lived in Korea, and he used to go to all the villages, and he would lay out his plans. I'm going to go to this village and this village, you know, in 
logical order, and then he would lay it before the Lord, and the Lord would rearrange his plans based on timing order when he needed to be there. He said so sometimes he would go all the way north and then all the way south and then back up and then back down because it was the timing of the Lord to get there, not the logistical ease of our mind to get there. So as I was talking to him about that, he, I, I was talking to him about that. I says, is that what you mean? And um, he said, he didn't answer. You know, like I said, I was just having a little conversation. He says, this is what I'm inviting you into, a closer relationship with us to move as we move to do only what you see us doing. I said, I'm ready to step forward. Will you go with me? He said, I am always with you, but you need to step first. So I went to step up. You know, I was a little bit like, uh, and it wasn't that I was afraid. I just was like, okay, this is going to change. And, you know, your mind works a little bit. But when I stepped onto the highway, it was interesting because it was splashes. You know, you think of a highway being hard and concrete and, you know, asphalt. But no, when I stepped on it, there were giant splashes everywhere I stepped. And uh, as, I, as it splashed up, it splashed up on me. It was thick like paint. And it was like golden and, 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 and brilliant and illuminating. It, it was just something I'd never experienced before. And it, everywhere I stepped, it would just splash up and get all over me. And I was like, that is interesting. And I told the Lord, I said, I thought it would be unmovable and hard. But it wasn't. It was fluid and filling. And it splashed on me what I needed to carry. So where I stepped it would splash and cover me with what I needed to carry. And um, at the end of it, I just had this sense of wonder and holiness. But what I also had a sense was he was scrambling my predictability because I expected the highway to be a certain encounter to make me more aware of what he does is not predictable in our eyes, but in his is completely, right? So I share this because I want to pray over us and invite us to step into this highway of holiness, this place with the Lord where, where things are just uh, mobile and fluid and, and splashy and you know just whatever we need in this time of revelation this time of fresh anointing to be able to move as he moves to do what he does and be able to step in to a greater understanding a greater breakthrough a greater whatever a flower and salt and just weird stuff that he's going to do for us that won't that we won't override with our mind but we'll jump in with our spirit amen Okay, so if you guys will pray, I mean, uh, stand. The, this morning, last night, I dreamed while I was praying at the very end of service, I just fell down on the ground in the spirit. That's twice I've dreamed that. And the last week, I'm like, okay, God, is there a warning? A warning? Are we all just going to fall in the spirit? Yeah, so if you're interested in that, just extend your hands and let's just agree together for this highway of holiness. Lord, even as we are one in the spirit, that's what your word says. We're one in the spirit. We're one body with one God. We just thank you, Lord, that there is a, always an invitation to step. But this invitation in this highway of holiness carries a weight, carries a shift, a, a dynamic movement of you that maybe we haven't experienced before. So even as we agree, yes, Lord, we want to step and we take that step in, Lord, I just thank you that everyone will experience this newfound 
revelation, this, this new wine, this fresh oil, this new anointing to go with, with this revelation that they're getting, Lord. I just thank you that we are, um, uh, I just keep seeing a roar of the Spirit, like those clouds that roll in. Uh, when there's about to be a big rain, Matt even mentioned that today, the clouds that roll in, it's like a roar. We're like a roar of, of your spirit going across our, our areas of influence, our territories, and, and releasing the abundant rain of you, God where we're releasing the anointing, the revelation that you have. We are breaking the chains. We are uh, backing up the enemy. We are tearing down the strongholds, Lord. We're securing our family, Lord. God, we just thank you that our descendants, our children's children's children are going to serve the Lord and call you by name and go even further than we're able to go. Uh, I was just thinking about Isla back there during worship and being a part and just seeing her mom up there worshiping and Emily and Marielle and Jean just seeing that family dynamic. God, we are, are, are dynamic worshipers of you. God, we thank you for what you're releasing right now. God, we thank you that as we step into this highway of holiness, and you can just take a step in front of you if you want to, that as we step in and we feel the fluid splash the anointing of the Holy Spirit fall on us, Lord, that there will be a revelation so much we can hardly contain it, that we will become uh, great writers of everything that you've given us so we can begin to release and put together and piece out what you're doing in this hour, Lord. God, thank you for things that have been uh, delayed that have come into action. Thank you for uh, a housing season that is available for us to pick and choose from. God, we just thank you for uh, children and more babies that uh, are going to come. Lord, we just thank you that there's an anointing of favor, of fatness over your people, that a new wine is flowing out. Uh, even Amos 9.13 says in the message that it's going to come so fast that our head is going to spin, that we are going to have a hard time uh, running as fast as you're taking us. But by the power of the Spirit, just like uh, Elijah did with the rain, just as the power of the Spirit, we will outrun the chariots and be able to stay ahead of the curve in order to release your revelation and your anointing in this hour. So, Father, we just thank you. We praise you. We honor you. And everyone says, Amen. Amen.